Hey guys, AV Songbird here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna even post this video. I just probably just be a video diary. You know, I've got some things I need to get off my chest and kind of ramble on so I can get my thoughts straight. All my life, looking back, I can't remember a point in my life where I didn't put tremendous pressure on myself. When I was little, I remember when my parents got divorced, I was six. And there were reasons that happened and they were good reasons. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but you know, that's not the focus of this. But when I was six, when my parents got divorced, I remember going through all of that and it was me and my mom and my brothers and I was worried about my mom and my brothers and taking care of them and you know it's a hard thing to go through when your parents get divorced you know and when you're a kid going through a divorce you want to be strong and you know you kind of feel like the world's kind of riding on your shoulders and everyone says it's not your fault but you kind of feel like it was so you know I tried to keep it together and to be strong and to be there for my family and I remember I was so worried about my mom through all of it because even back then I'd seen her go through things and put up with things that to this day my mom's the strongest woman I've ever met you know just for all the things she went through and all the sacrifices she made and all the things that happened and you know, I remember being that little and wanting to grow up and be like her. You know, to be the strong one that everyone came to when they needed to fall apart. To be the one that everyone relied on with everything. The one they turned to when they needed help and support and guidance. And I've always kind of tried to be that person. But... I remember growing up in my mom's house, there were always kids in the house that she took care of and kind of stepping in and wanting to be like her. I focused on taking care of them with her and trying to help her to make sure they had what they needed and wanted and that they were happy and that she was happy and I found my happiness in taking care of everyone around me back then. And then wanting to keep my mom happy. I found out early it made her happy when I had good grades. She believed that family and school were absolutely everything. So I busted my ass and always tried to get the best grades I could. I had A's and B's all the way through school. And, and no, I didn't take cake classes. I took the hardest classes I could possibly take. I remember back in high school, I was taking AP classes, you know, just to prove I could do it. And the lowest grade I ever got was a C plus, And I was pissed off, I remember, because I was like two points away <clears throat> from a B minus. But I always put so much pressure on myself and trying to keep everyone happy. And my entire life I've focused on other people you know when I was 11 I know I'm skipping around you guys my mind doesn't work in a straight line this is kind of how it works you should see my writing notebooks but when I was 11 I started babysitting on my own and I made my time about taking care of the kids I was babysitting keeping them happy keeping their parents happy and I took care of my friends and did whatever they needed or wanted and did whatever I could to go out of my way to make my friends happy and let them know I was always there for them. And when I was 17, I was going to school full time, balancing a full school load and I got a job. So I was working to keep my boss and coworkers happy and I worked from I worked full time. There was a point I was working two jobs and I slept in my car in between just, you know, because I kept so busy. I just juggling everyone I've ever had in my life and doing everything I could to make them happy. And I always put so much pressure on myself to keep my parents happy, to keep my brothers happy, to keep my friends happy, my family, my pets, 
you know, and now being a mom and a stepwife, a stepmom and a wife, blah, these are unedited guys, it's just me, but I put so much pressure on myself, I feel bad, my stepsons, you know, are in the same place I was in, you know, and I know what they went through because I went through some of the things they went through and just, you know, letting them know that I know what they went through and being there for them and loving them and trying to let them know that if they need someone to talk to, they can come to me, you know, trying to keep their mind off it and trying to do the little things for them my mom did for me to help me get through it. I can honestly say, because this has come up lately, that there has never really been any point in my life where I sat back and asked myself what it was I wanted out of my life. I've always wrapped myself up in taking care of everyone in my life and whenever someone needed help, whether it was someone to talk to or they needed, you know, a couch to crash on or they needed anything, I've always done what I could to take care of other people. It's kind of why it was natural for me when I got my EMT license and I actually did the shift on the ambulance, you know? The idea of working, taking care of other people. When I worked in the old retirement home, when I was doing in-home care and everything, it was always such a natural transition for me. Sorry, I'm doing stuff on my computer too, backing up stuff. But, um... But there has never been a point in my life until now where I sat back and asked myself what I wanted. What, you know, because I've been so busy. And it's easy now because, well, it's kind of easy. It's bittersweet. I'm at a point in my life now, and I have been for the last five or six years, kind of getting, been getting here where all the friends and all the family and all the people I care gave for and babysat for and nannied for and took care of are heading off into their lives and doing their own kind of thing now and you know they're all happy they don't need help anymore so they're off doing their own thing and my life is slowing down to the point where you know my parents are halfway across country you know, my family is all scattered. The only people really in my daily life anymore are my husband, my stepsons, and my dogs. And I get my calls from my mom, but like I said, she's halfway across country. <clears throat> when it comes to people I have to take care of on a daily basis, the numbers were shrinking. And I asked my husband, well, what am I supposed to do now? You know, I don't work anymore. I stay home and he likes that because I'm always here when he needs me. But, you know, I'm here when the kids need me. When hubby's working, I can be with the kids. I'm here. But it's one of those, what do I do now that I don't have all the friends to look after, all the friends and family to take care of? You know, I don't have patience anymore. I don't have... You know, I felt kind of lost. And he goes, well, do what you want to do. What do you want to do? You know? And the one thing that's always made me happy besides taking care of other people, you know, and looking after other people and being there for other people is my writing. You know? When I was going through my depression when a few years ago... My family, my husband, my stepsons, my dogs, and my writing got me through it. You know, if not for that, I'd have really been lost. But he asked me what I wanted to do, and I laugh. Out of everything I've ever done in my life, the one selfish thing I've ever done is taking the time to step back and start my vlog and to start my YouTube 
you know, because I'm kind of confined in the life I'm in, and that's not me saying I'm unhappy with it. It's I spend a lot of time at home. I'm very isolated out where I am. You know, I don't have an incredible car that can get me everywhere all the time. And, you know, I don't have a career of my own anymore. So I'm not really making, you know, the income I used to make. So when it comes to the idea of being able to get my songs and poems and stories, you know, and my ideas out there, I kind of looked at a vlog and a blog and YouTube as kind of my way of putting myself out there, you know, and of sharing my work with people and my thoughts. And ironically, the one selfish act I've done in my life that had nothing to do with anyone else but me you know, the one time I did something just for me, I have people coming to me from all over saying that, you know, how supportive I am and saying that I'm a caring and giving person and that I'm helping them and that I'm, you know, inspiring them and I'm doing <laughs> this, you know, it's the one selfish thing I've done. And part of me is still selfish about it. Part of me is hoping that maybe my writing's good enough to go somewhere, that maybe one of my songs are good enough or my stories or that someone likes my style and somehow I can build a life around it, you know? And no, I'm not saying I want to hit it big. No, I'm not saying I want to be, you know, any kind of a big deal. I would be lost if I was. I just, I would love to live the kind of life where I'm comfortable, where I can come and go and be who I am and not feel isolated or confined. You know, to build a life that I can sit back at the end of the day and be proud of. And I'm not saying I'm not proud being, you know, a wife and a stepmom. I love my family. I wouldn't trade them for the world. I love my dogs. I love the house. But I don't want to sit back when I'm old, you know, when the kids are grown and head off and they don't need me every day anymore where... They're off doing their own thing. I don't want to sit back and remember that my life became just making beds. I don't want them to see me give up on the idea that I could be more, that I had more to offer than just making beds and washing dishes. You know, my imagination, my creativity have always been a huge part of who I am and the sad fact is... I've hidden so much of that side of me away from people, even people I'm close to. There's so much of me that I would never get to share if I don't share my work. And I don't want to sit there when I'm old and remember that I spent the majority of my life hiding the majority of myself from people. You know, I want people to know me and find out whether they love or hate me for who I am and what I really am like and what I do. I don't want to be the strong one all the time. I just want to be myself. And anymore, I can't tell the difference. You know, because being there for people and being the rock and being the strong one for everyone that tries to take care of the shit when it hits the fan so no one else has to. You know, anymore. I laugh. My husband tells me to relax and I told him I don't know how. <laughs> I mean, I can have fun. I can go out and relax and do things. I can let off steam. But when you've always been the one that everyone turned to, I don't know how to be anything different. Hi, Gwen. She's staring at me. 
I'm probably not even going to post this one, you know, I just... This is the first selfish thing I've ever done in my life, is to take the time to do the vlog and the YouTube, and to know that there's those of you out there that I'm helping, you know, that I'm supporting, that I'm, you know, affecting through doing this, and that I'm helping people, doing the one selfish thing I've ever done in my life. It's a strange thought. You know, because it did start out as a selfish, hey, I don't want to die at someday and never have shared my work, you know, and never found out if maybe I did have something that people would enjoy, you know, because it would be cool if people came to like my writing the way I do. It would be cool if people came across my work and it made them feel something. And I've got a dog behind me. But I'm probably not going to post this one. I just... It's sad when you sit back in your own life and find out that in your own life you feel like you're supporting cast and like you... so much of your life has so little to do with you that it's all about just taking care of others. And... Which is a good thing, but... While you're taking care of the other people in your life, while you're doing for everyone else, you can't stop, not stop, and step back and remember that you're there too, that it's your life and you should be happy and feel fulfilled too. And that you never know, maybe the selfish move you make will end up affecting other people and making people happy. And she's curling up in my coat on the back of my chair serious. She sleeps there. I literally sit here at my desk every night on the edge of my chair to accommodate a two-pound chihuahua. But I'm gonna let you guys go. This has been longer than I meant it to. I, like I said, probably won't post this. I just needed to get some thoughts out. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your night. This has been A.V. Songbird. Night, guys.